Welcome back to Let's Play Star Wars The Old Republic. This is Kazorch, and there's one thing that I forgot to do before I left to my ship, and that is uh, actually unlock the uh, Treek mercenary contract, so we can have another party member. So, I already have that unlocked in my collection, so I can just claim it whenever I want. And using it will unlock this quest here with this droid to unlock the new party member. Greetings, Hunter. Your name and reputation are known, even to me. I am MQ-12, liaison to the Ministry of War's Mercenary Recruitment Division. I find appropriate employment for talented freelance... Actually, I'm just going to spacebar through I most of this. I One thing. Welcome. Because I've already done it on another character. You can see me do it on my uh, Inquisitor Sorcerer. Yes, now we have another party member, Treek. Originally, Treek was one of the few characters that could both heal and tank. Treek had two stances that you could put her in. Yes, Treek is a female. And uh, she could be <clears throat> either heal or tank. Most characters up until this point were either pure DPS and had like two different DPS stances, one armor piercing and one something else. Um... And then, while other characters were either healer or DPS, or tank or DPS, uh, Treek was actually a healer or a tank, depending on what stance you put her in. So, that's a little bit of interesting trivia for you there. And here's a little shortcut, no matter which uh, docking bay you come to up here, there's this little priority transport terminal. It'll unlock eventually all the way, but for now you can go straight into your ship from there. So it's a nice little shortcut. You don't have to find your ship's docking bay and know exactly which quadrant it's on and walk all the way around to it to get on your ship. You can if you want to do, you know, role playing and say, look, I'm getting on my ship and whatever. But if you're just trying to speed run through these kinds of things, just head up to anyone and then click on that and head on in. What is down there? Oh, that's right. Treek's got some uh, conversations. Let's. Do them, and then we'll head over to Belmora. I assume you've settled in. I hope we make space journeys many, Chief. Um, the conversations are exactly the same as my uh, sorcerer, so in the future I'll do Treek's conversations off-screen, and I'll do the other characters on-screen. But I'm just gonna pick all the options that I think will Treek will like a lot. We have the same approach. Yeah, greatly approves. That's a good one. Those friends. There we go. So, if you want to see all the Treek's conversations, watch my Inquisitor. Or I may have also done. I think they're a little bit different on Republic too. So I think I'm doing them all on my on a uh, my Jedi Knight. All right. So we're off to Belmora. Right, yep, there it is here in the middle quadrant there. And then it'll automatically use a whole term. By the way, this right here is how you do the uh, spaceship uh, mini games. I think you have a certain number of them a week if you're not a subscriber, but you that's where they are on the ship. Ever sends us anywhere nice? The Empire's been fighting for control of Belmara for years. Death tolls in the high seven figures. How is there anything left to fight over? The weapons factories are built to withstand attack. The people aren't. Let's see what Krista has to say about our job here. I'm starting the hollow now. Welcome to Balmora, Hunter. Your target is the right impressive Admiral Ivernus. They call him Admiral Untouchable. Spends all his time on a fancy flagship surrounded by armed soldiers. Can't kill what you can't touch, Hunter. You gotta lure Admiral Ivernus off his flying fortress and down to Balmora. Make things even more interesting. No friendly contacts here. You gotta figure this out yourself. And don't forget, the job ain't done till you're the only hunter left standing. Good luck. I make my own luck. That's what I like most about you. He's a war hero, all right. Actually won some battles against the Mandalorians. Wonder if that's how he got on the list. Hmm, this is interesting. Turns out one of the Admiral's toadies is in the market for a bounty hunter. Let's get every piece of information on them you can pull down. 
The job listing contact is Lieutenant Major Purell. And get this, discretion is of the utmost importance. Whatever this is, Perel wants it secret. Let's apply for a job and see if we can't work our way up to the Admiral. Lieutenant Major Perel's office is at the Imperial base in Sobrick. Let's go impress him and see where it leads. All right, so we got to impress Major Perel so we can get to his boss. Okay, just checking on my inventory. It's nice and clean. And we're headed down to Belmora. Belmora is a planet wracked with war. If you haven't watched other um, playthroughs of it, and Balmora actually kind of belongs to the Republic now, and then the Republic, or then the Empire comes in and claims it through this, uh, through the main quest line of the planet here, and then the Republic actually comes back later and claims it back because the Republic comes back to Balmora later on, and so it's as if you're running all the, all eight classes at the same time. Oh look. What's going on here? Is this the other bounty hunter? <laughs> you there, bounty hunter! We want a word with you. Your trap set up. Take a number and get in line. You see this blaster? It means we get to jump to the front of the line. We've come to collect a debt from you, and we expect payment in full. We Corellians are very particular about our debts. Which you debt? killed our brother Vex, you pile of scum. Oh. You got anything to say for yourself? Take off before you regret it. We're not afraid of you, and neither was Vex. He was the galaxy's best gunfighter. He was that Corellian bank robber on Hutter, right? The fast draw guy. You couldn't take him in a stand-up fight, so you shot him in the back. Now you're going to pay the price. The name Taro Blood ring a bell? He told us how you slaughtered Vex and then killed the old man, Brayden, when he discovered your crime. Brayden? I, I can't believe even Taro would stoop that low. Only thing worse than lies are the people who repeat them. You're dead. I'm not scared of you. simple enough to deal with. Especially with uh, Mako set on heal mode there. Can't wait till I start my next character and I, I can get all four buffs going. And the last buff will be an improvement on critical. So that'll be nice. Um, here is the planet quest line and starting from here I am going to space bar through it. I'm still going to pick it up and run it because it is purple here. I am going to space bar through it so we're not wasting so much of your viewers time. I'm just going to sit and wait through the uh, class quests. I've been How I them. Why doesn't it? I won't check. All right. So don't worry about me. I will be space barring through the planetary quests and I might even pick up some side quests just to see if they're easy to run while I'm going through. But the uh, the main class quests I will be uh, viewing in full. So I can pick that one up nice and quick. So that'll be nice. Uh, let's open our speeder over here. Alright, so Major Purell is up here, as is a trainer with some stuff for me to learn. Awesome. What do we got? Timer like me got a lot of tricks yeah, for right. sale. Okay, high energy gas cylinder. What that is, um, see so yeah, how I have the ion gas cylinder active, and there's the combustible gas cylinder that we got. Well, those are for the different uh, avenues that we can go. The shield tech. Um, is a tank specific one and so you want to have the ion gas cylinder active and you're a tank pretty much. Um, Pyrotech wants to use the combustible gas cylinder and they'll get this replaces their uh, rocket punch and does a little extra damage and then they get a few other attacks and then advanced prototype 
Um, I have not actually gone through myself, but I've looked at it briefly, and it does depend on this high-energy gas cylinder. So we'll get it because it's free in case we ever decide to go down that path, but I'm going to take it off the hot bar, and I'll just sit there in my skills. Sonic Missile. Sonic Missile is pretty much your AoE uh, taunt while you're in tank mode. It does other things in other modes, but while you're in tank mode, it's your AoE taunt. So that's what you want it Come for. Back. You might learn something. You get lots of enemies to look at you at once. Shoot a sonic missile at them. Welcome to the office of Lieutenant Major Farrell. I am ODX-9. How may I be of assistance? Farrell sent for me, didn't he tell you? That's odd. I have no record of an appointment in my scheduling data banks. If I may inquire, with whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? I'm a bounty hunter. That's all you need to know. A bounty hunter? Oh, how interesting. I don't believe I've ever met one of you. My sincerest apologies, but the Lieutenant Major is currently in a meeting and cannot be disturbed. Better not be the other Thank bounty you hunters. Visiting Lieutenant Major Farrell's office. Have a pleasant day. Oh my goodness. You're dead, fella. <laughs> What was that racket? ODX. ODX, answer me, you worthless piece of junk. Who's out there? I'm here to solve your problems, bounty hunter. My problems? What do you know about my problems? Ah, of course. I understand. Uh, give me a moment to unlock the door. That sounds like a trap. The our only connection to Admiral Ivernus, so let's make the Lieutenant Major a very satisfied customer. Who's this murderer? My apologies for the poor welcome. I never informed that idiot droid I was hiring a bounty hunter. I'm assistant to the naval attaché of the governor of Balmora. I specialize in intelligence gathering. Master is wise and powerful. This is Mergir, an amusing gift from a friend on Drummond Cass. What she lacks in intelligence, she makes up for in entertainment value. Let's get down to business, shall we? My superior, Colonel Sashias, is an incompetent fool. I toil in his shadow, though his job should rightfully be mine. I kill him. You get a promotion. If only it were that simple. Unfortunately... My superior is popular with the right people. But what's most infuriating is that Colonel Sarsius has the full confidence of Admiral Ivanus. Colonel Sarsius remains in power because he excels at hiding his gross incompetence from the Admiral. But we're going to tear down that facade. The Colonel loses his job. Admiral Ivanus comes here and gives you a promotion. We're going to work well together. I can tell. I want you to create... Problems for Colonel Sarsius. Problems I'm confident he can't deal with. Your missions will involve plenty of mayhem and destruction. And the pay is quite generous. Interested? Mayhem and destruction are my specialties. Then it was fate that led you here. Your first target is the Okara Droid Factory. Before the Empire invaded Balmora, we sabotage the facility, turning the droids into crazed killing machines. Colonel Sarsius is very close to deciphering the facility's control codes. If he does, it will bring the droids fully under the Empire's control. The Colonel cannot be allowed such a victory. I sent a data slicer to enter a code scrambling virus into the facility's computer system. Very sneaky, Lieutenant Major. Yes, I was rather proud of that plan myself. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The security team escorting the slicer was killed by the facility's droids. Now the slicer is trapped inside. The slicer refuses to input the virus until I send a rescue team. I'm sending you. The slicer's name is Zalia. Force her to input the virus into the system. Then eliminate her. No loose ends. We'll have more business to discuss when you return. Alrighty, we gain an 
another level there. Level 22 give me anything? No, I need level 24 to get... Um, what is this? Oh, I start getting heat screens. Sweet. Heat screens you can use up with when you get heat blast at level 26. Heat blast used to be a far higher level, and translocate didn't used to be a skill. Well, this is quite changed from what I'm used to. Okay, but yeah, you start getting heat screens, which you know improves your defense and things. Now look. You want to be on top? You're gonna need the skill. Jet charge. There we go. Okay. I like to have jet charge right here. Nice prominent spot. Um, I don't use my missile actually very much. Not in this build, anyways. Come back. You might learn something. It's just always more beneficial to use flame burst rather than that missile. Um. I take that back. In a very few circumstances, that missile can actually knock down standard and weak targets, but that's about it. But against standard and weak targets, you know, you're doing just fine anyway, so whatever. And this is the planet quest. So let's do that. We'll run that, and we'll see if Step Lightly is convenient to run. Alright, let's see where we're going. Yeah, we're going to have to come all the way down here for the planet quest. So it looks like we're not going to get back to the uh, main uh, class quest for a while. Possibly not this episode. But it is important to see how you would go about uh, running the other quests. The planet quest line and maybe some side quests. learning my attacks. It'd be kind of boring if all I did was just show you the class quest stuff, so... This is the heroic mission nearby. If it's close to... If it's close to where I'm doing things, then I'll... <coughs> then I'll run it. Otherwise, I'll skip it. Because it does offer... Most heroics offer five common data crystals. So there you go. See if I need them. Looks like already this one's fairly easy to get to. Alright, where are you? Oh, you're right on the inside of this wall here. Well, let's do that. Do this. Just make sure everybody's attacking me. Alright. Um, I didn't think I had that yet. Oh yeah, I did get that at level 20. Uh, flame engine. So while I've got my ion gas cylinder active, this guy, um, occasionally my attacks will give me a flame engine, which makes my flamethrower uh, free and it goes twice as fast. And then eventually we'll get firestorm, and that's going to be a replacement for flamethrower. Actually, it does more damage and it might have an extra effect, too. But it applies to that same skill there. Alrighty, so... Yeah, they'll come around and fight me. I'll pick this up for now. So this is not terribly inconvenient to run, so I'll go ahead and run it. Looks like this one's got a few birds guarding it. And then again, doing this will make some enemies appear. So your flamethrower really becomes important in this build. You're still alive, and you're fighting Mako? My goodness. I'm not drawing in enough threat yet. This is probably the next level, yep. 
is the next level of of uh, scavenging gear. So we'll get that. That thing's right there, so let's clear it out. Easy peasy. Unguarded now. Yep, that guy took them all out. Left it for me. Because they're not doing slicing, or they're not worrying about it. But I am worrying about it because slicing will help me to get more. Let's see, what am I doing on this character? Cybertech mods and enhancements. some point there is another quest hub that's all the way down there hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want to head there now I think I want to head there now so this quest hub over here these are good guys okay and if anything, we unlocked the uh, quick travel point and the, and well, I guess the taxi point was all, always unlocked. But now we can come in here, turn this in, and pick up another quest and see if they uh, line up. So let's pick this up. There we go. And drop off these in the drop box. Okay. Now, the next quest that we just picked up also happens out here. Um, you know those little shield, shielded bubble things that we kept seeing? We just have to use this to disarm them, and then we have to... Or to take down the shields, and then we disarm them. That's as simple as that one is. Not sure if I want to be doing that. I guess we can't be doing that right now. So we use this. Take down the shield. You all right? Disarm the turret. Or reprogram it, I guess. Is the proper terminology. Simple as that. So we have to clear out some enemies around some of them. Shield down, reprogram turret. Oh, you're gonna take that one out. That's fine, that's fine. I'll take this one out and then I'll do another one on my way back from that next mission, so. I'm pretty sure that flame and gym. Pretty sure that flame engine uh, resets the cooldown on flamethrower also. So if it's not ready to use, it'll make it ready to use. That's actually pretty convenient. Alright, this is the heroic, which we can now solo. I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to come in here and do this 
quest really quick. I think I'm fine on all my gear and everything. Now the answer would probably be different if um, I were not a cybertech, but since I'm a cybertech I can actually craft my uh, mods and enhancements. It won't be quite as high a level as I could get because I have to wait until I can find the materials. Yes, you can hear a... Uh, what's this? Oh, that's a lore object. And here we just have to get a couple of these generators. Um, if you watch one of the episodes, there's a... if you go up the uh, elevator back here, this. Nope, don't feel like getting that. Well, I guess I'll have to. Ooh, that flamethrower's nice. And the Datacron up there, I think, is a two-man Datacron to get. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Where the heck am I going? I'm returning to him. Uh, fair enough. Uh, how's my recording time? Not enough yet. <laughs> That's the fun thing about that. Is even if you cast that uh, cast, if you shoot an explosive dart at somebody and they're about to die anyway, they'll still blow up on death instead of at the end of the timer. So that's that keeps things interesting. I have to keep remembering this character does not have slicing. I have another character that I'm leveling up on another server right now who's a power tech, but I'm taking him down the uh, pyrotech. So I know a little bit about pyrotechs. And he is an armor tech, except he, he has a slicing instead of a cyber tech as the third. So he sees scavenging and slicing nodes hanging around. But on this character, all I'm going to see are uh, scavenging nodes. That's the only gathering uh, crew skill that I took. I'm going to get a lot of gathering stuff. Okay, um, we are about out of time. I'm just going to come down here and turn this in, and then I will meet you... Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll meet you up in front of... No, I think I'll still go back and do that on screen. I'll go back and turn in that other quest too, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, turn this one in real quick. Oh, we get... Uh, Hey, absorption and defense. That's great for tanking. Accuracy and power. It's good for DPSing. And actually, that's the way my gear is now, and I'm leveling up and everything. I'm considering getting the accuracy. Yeah, let's get the absorption and defense. Because then if I actually do do a flashpoint, and I'm level bound and everything, I'll actually have some defense and shield scores or absorption scores and stuff. That'll be nice. Now, being defense and absorb, it is exactly the uh, defensive mod that this build does not like. But, you know, it's better than nothing. This this build likes shield of the three defensive uh, abilities, scores. The, uh, the pyrotech, not pyrotech, shield tech likes lots of shield. Shield helps him get lots of things, lots of nice things. Um, 
that's the class phase. Haha. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. So let's come over here. Turn this in real quick. Uh, talk to another lieutenant. Where am I going? I'm going up there. Okay then. Um, I'll end the episode here now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this taxi terminal down to whatever taxi pad is right near where Lieutenant Thorpe is. And, yeah. That'll do it for me. I will see you around this taxi terminal next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.